بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over these past few years that he has given us an opportunity to study the life and the biography of his messenger, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then alhamdulillah, we followed that up with a study of the life of the messenger's closest companions, the first three of the Khulafa ur Rashidin. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu and Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu anhu. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to study the biographies of these great men and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us benefit through studying these lives and these biographies. Tonight insha'Allah we will continue and we will embark on the biography of the fourth of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he was a first cousin of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The father of Ali and the father of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were brothers. The father of, of Ali was Abu Talib and the father of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Abdullah. So Abdullah and Abu Talib were brothers. They were both sons of Abdul Muttalib. And as we know from the seerah, the father of the Prophet wasallam, Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, he died before the Prophet Muhammad wasallam was even born. So the Prophet wasallam never saw his father. The Prophet wasallam, he was born and he lived with his mother and his mother passed away when the Prophet ﷺ was still a young child. So his father passed away even before he was born. His mother passed away when he was only about six years old. Then he went to live with his grandfather, the Prophet ﷺ. Then he went to live with his grandfather after his mother died. So he lived with his grandfather Abdul Muttalib for a couple of more years and then Abdul Muttalib also died. So when the Prophet ﷺ was still a child, he was still eight years old, he went to live with his uncle, Abu Talib. And that is where he grew up for the rest of his childhood. He lived with his, with his uncle, Abu Talib. So Abu Talib was actually like a father figure in the life of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. He was the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, but the relationship that he had with the Prophet ﷺ was more like the relationship of a father to a son rather than an uncle to a nephew. So Abu Talib was a very important figure in the life of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ grew up in the household of Abu Talib. And this is before Ali ibn Abi Talib عنه, was even born. When the Prophet ﷺ was staying in the house of Abu Talib, Ali was not even born at that time. But Abu Talib had other children and the Prophet wasallam he grew up with those children in their household. Eventually the Prophet wasallam grew up, he became a young man, he set up his own household, he got married to Khadija radiallahu anha and Ali ibn Abi Talib was born a few years after that. The Prophet wasallam got married to Khadija Prophet ﷺ was 25 years old at the time of his marriage to Khadija. Ali radiallahu anh, was born in the household of Abu Talib after the Prophet ﷺ had already been married to Khadija for five years. So the Prophet ﷺ was 30 years old when Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh, was born. So as a child, Abu Talib sent his son Ali radiallahu anhu, his, his young son Ali radiallahu anhu, he sent him actually to live with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So look at this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa lived in the house of Abu Talib during his childhood. Now, Abu Talib, he has a young son. 
the Prophet ﷺ is grown up, he's a young man, he's married, he has his own house. Abu Talib sends his son, his young son Ali, to live in the household of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So Ali radiallahu an actually grew up in the blessed household of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, the household of the Prophet ﷺ and our mother Ummul Muminin Khadija radiallahu anha. So that is the that is the upbringing that Ali radiallahu an had from a young age. He was brought up in the house of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is even before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation. This was before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given his mission as the Messenger of Allah. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation, when he first received revelation, the first few verses of Surah Al-Alaq, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقٍ إِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمِ الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمِ عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ These were the first verses revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. At that time, the Prophet ﷺ was 40 years old. And Ali radiallahu an at that time was 10 years old. When Ali radiallahu an came to know that this revelation has come down to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he immediately believed in his cousin. He immediately believed in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though he was a young child, he was 10 years old. Right? He immediately believed and he was the first child to accept Islam. He was the first child to accept Islam. So the life story of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, it begins with great honor. First of all, he is closely related by blood to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They share the same grandfather. And in addition to that, he actually physically spends his childhood in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is how the story of Ali radiallahu anhu begins. With this type of closeness to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this closeness remained throughout his life. He started his life close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he lived his life as one of the closest people to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When he grew up, he became one of the closest confidants and advisors to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and one of the most beloved of the people to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And a proof of the love that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had for Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu is that he gave his own daughter, Fatima bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave his own daughter, Fatima radiallahu anha, to Ali radiallahu an in marriage. So this shows the close bond that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had with Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. Ali radiallahu an, he always remained by the side of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout the various struggles that the Muslims faced in Mecca before the Hijrah. And after the Hijrah to Medina, Ali radiallahu an remained by the side of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and continued to support him in every way. And after the passing away of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ali radiallahu an, he was a great pillar of support to the first Khalifa Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. He was an advisor and he was a, a helper to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. Then after Abu Bakr radiallahu an passed away and Umar radiallahu an became Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali radiallahu an remained a close supporter and advisor of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. After Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an was martyred and Uthman radiallahu an became the Khalifa, Ali radiallahu an, he continued to support and advise and be by the side of Uthman radiallahu an. And after Uthman radiallahu anhu was martyred and Ali radiallahu anhu became Amir al-Mu'mineen, he led with wisdom and he led in a way where he tried his best to unite the ummah at a time of turmoil. It was a very, very difficult period of time when Ali radiallahu anhu was entrusted with the responsibility of becoming Amirul Mu'mineen. 
when the fitna occurred and we spoke in detail about the fitna that occurred during the latter period of the Khilafah of Uthman radiallahu anhu the Khawarij they started showing their faces the rebels the people who rebelled against the rule of Uthman radiallahu anhu they started a great fitna during the end of the Khilafah of Uthman radiallahu anhu but during that time Ali radiallahu anhu made it clear that his allegiance remained with Uthman. Even though there were some of those fitna makers who were telling Ali radiallahu anhu, we will make you the Khalifa. We just want to get rid of Uthman and we want to put you in his place. Ali radiallahu anhu, he refused this. And he continued to stand by Uthman radiallahu anhu and he denounced these rebels and their actions. But after the assassination of Uthman radiallahu anhu at the hands of these rebels, the Ummah was in a state of great chaos and turmoil and the burden of leadership fell upon the shoulders of Ali radiallahu anhu. So you can imagine it was a very difficult period of time. He became Amir al-Mu'mineen during this difficult period and there were a lot of trials and tribulations that were facing the Ummah during that time. But Ali radiallahu anhu, he handled the situation in the best way. And his knowledge of the rulings of Islam, his wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with, his leadership skills, his excellent way of dealing with people who, who disagreed with him, all of these things became very clear and apparent during the reign of Uthman, during the reign of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. So he was a man who was blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, in many areas. He didn't stand out in only one way. Rather, he stood out in all different ways. He was excellent in everything that he did. He was known for his, his diligence and his dedication in ibadah. He stood out in this regard. He was very knowledgeable. He was from amongst the most, uh, the most he was from amongst the most knowledgeable of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he stood out in terms of his knowledge as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Arhamu ummati bi ummati Abu Bakr wa ashadduhum fi deeni Allahi Umar wa asdaquhum haya'an Uthman wa aqdahum Ali. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the most merciful of my ummah to my ummah is Abu Bakr. And the one who is most strict in adhering to the religion of Allah is Umar. And the one who is the most pure in his, his modesty and his shyness is Uthman. And the one who is the best judge in this ummah is Ali. So the Prophet ﷺ is giving his testimony that Ali radiallahu an is the most, the best judge, the one who is the most blessed in being able to judge between the people from this ummah. So to be a judge, you have to be very well grounded in knowledge and not only knowledge, but you also have to have wisdom. So knowledge and wisdom, these are two components of being a good judge. So if Ali radiallahu anhu is the best judge of this ummah, that means he was someone who stood out in terms of his knowledge and also in terms of his wisdom. So he stood out in this regard as well. He was very knowledgeable in the Arabic language as well. He was a great poet. There's some beautiful Arabic poetry by Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. So he stood out in terms of his knowledge of the Arabic language as well. And of course, it is very well known that he was one of the greatest warriors on the battlefield as well. The efforts that he put forth in jihad the duels that he had, there were many one-on-one -on -one duels that he had from you know, the most well-known warriors of the kuffar. Ali radiallahu anh fought against them one-on-one -on -one and he defeated them. The, the stories of the, these, these duels between Ali radiallahu anh and the warriors of the kuffar, they're, they're legendary stories. right? So Ali radiallahu anh, he was known for, for his bravery and his and for his, his, his exemplary skill as a warrior on the battlefield as well. So he was someone who stood out, not only in just one or two ways, but he was excellent in everything that he did. From ibadah, to knowledge, to the Arabic language, to, 
to, to the battlefield. He was excellent in everything that he did. His leadership skills, his ability to resolve disputes between people. He was excellent in everything that he did. And this was a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. So inshallah we will begin our study of the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu by speaking about him and his name and his lineage. And then inshallah later on we will also get into a physical description of his characteristics, his physical characteristics. Ali radiallahu anhu in terms of his name and his lineage, he is Ali ibn Abi Talib, ibn Abdul Muttalib, ibn Hashim, ibn Abd Manaf, ibn Qusay, ibn Kilab. And he is the son of the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the son of the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we mentioned, Abu Talib was the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ali was the son of Abu Talib. The lineage of Ali connects with the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ at their paternal grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. So Ali radiallahu an, he was Qurashi, like the Prophet ﷺ, and he was also Hashimi, like the Prophet ﷺ. So he was from the Quraysh, and he was also from the same branch of the Quraysh as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was from. Banu Hashim. Now Quraysh, out of all of the tribes of the Arabs, Quraysh was known as the greatest of the tribes of the Arabs. And this was something that was accepted amongst all of the Arabs. The Quraysh was considered the greatest tribe of the Arabs and they were the most respected tribes of the Arabs. Now within the Quraysh, there were many branches of the Quraysh. And Banu Hashim, they are considered the greatest branch of the Quraysh. The Prophet wasallam, he said in a narration, he said, Inna Allah astafa kinana min waladi Ismail. Wastafa Quraishan min kinana. Wastafa Bani Hashim min Quraysh. Wastafani min Bani Hashim. فَأَنَا سَيِّدُ وَلَدِ آدَمْ وَلَا فَخْرَ وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ تَنْشَقُّ عَنْهُ الْأَرْضِ وَأَوَّلُ شَافِعْ وَأَوَّلْ مُشَفَّعْ The Prophet ﷺ said, Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Kinana from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salam. And he chose Quraysh from Kinana. And he chose Bani Hashim from Quraysh. And he chose me from Bani Hashim. So I am the leader of all of the children of Adam and I do not boast about it. And I am the first person whom the earth will open for on the day of resurrection. And I am the first person who will intercede on behalf of others on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And I am the first person whose intercession will be accepted. So the Prophet ﷺ in this narration, he mentions his own lineage, that he comes from the purest lineage, from the best of all lineages. And he mentions that Quraysh was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that from within Quraysh, Bani Hashim was chosen. The branch of Banu Hashim, that is the best tribe of the Quraysh. That is the branch that the Prophet ﷺ was from and it also is the branch that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an belonged to. So this is also a great honor for Ali ibn Abi Talib. That he's not only from Quraysh, but he is from the best branch of the Quraysh as well. He is from Banu Hashim. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, he was born in Mecca 10 years before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam first received revelation. He was born 10 years before the Prophet ﷺ first received revelation. So the Prophet ﷺ, as we know, he received revelation at the age of 40. So if Ali was born 10 years before that, that means when Ali was born, the Prophet ﷺ was 30 years old. So that means the age difference between the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and Ali ibn Abi Talib عن, the age difference between them is 30 years. The Prophet وسلم, was 30 years older than Ali ibn 
Abi Talib. It is mentioned by the historians that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was born on the 12th of Rajab. He was born on the 12th of the month of Rajab in the 30th year of the Amul Fil. Amul Fil, that's the year of the elephant. And that is the year that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in. And because of that incident, the incident of the elephant, Abraha bringing his army to destroy the Kaaba, he had an elephant in his army, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the birds with stones to destroy Abraha and his army. That happened the same year that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was born. And because of, of that incident, it was a major event. That year became known as Amul Fil, the year of the elephant. And it basically became, uh, it, it became a measuring point in time. The Amul Fil became a measuring point in time. So people would say, oh, this incident happened 10 years after Amul Fil. This incident happened five years before Amul Fil. So Amul Fil, the year of the elephant, it basically became a reference point. So when the birth of Ali radiallahu anhu is mentioned, it is mentioned that he was born 30 years from the Amul Fil. Counting from the Amul Fil, he was born 30 years after that. As, and as we know, the Prophet ﷺ was born in Amul Fil itself. He was born in the year of the elephant itself. So Ali radiallahu anhu was born 30 years after that. And as we mentioned, that means the age difference between the Prophet ﷺ and Ali radiallahu anhu was 30 years. Some historians mention that Ali radiallahu anhu was born inside the Kaaba. But there is really no authentic source to confirm this. It could be true, Allahu A'lam, but it cannot be authentically confirmed. His name, of course, is Ali. We know him as Ali, and that is his name. But it is said that his name wasn't originally actually Ali. His name is Ali ibn Abi Talib, but when he was born, that was actually not his name in the beginning. When he was born, it is said that his mother initially named him Haydara. His name, his mother actually named him when he was born Haydara. Haydara is an Arabic word that means lion. And in Arabic, there are actually more than 200 words that mean lion in the Arabic language. Right? Asad, Haydara, Layth, Qaswara. So many, so many words that mean lion. Right? So the mother of Ali, radiallahu anh, actually initially named him Haydara. And the reason why she named him Haydara, because Haydara means lion. And the mother of Ali, radiallahu anh, wanted to name her son with a similar name to her father. Her father's name was Asad. The father of the mother of Ali, his name was Asad. And Asad means lion. So she wanted to name her son, not with necessarily the same name, but a name that had the same meaning as the name of her father. So she decided to name him Haydara, which also means lion. And there is some beautiful poetry by Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, where, where he mentions this, that his mother actually named him Haydara. He says, أَنَا الَّذِي سَمَّتْنِي أُمِّي Haydara." A beautiful poem by Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu where he mentions here that I am the one whose mother named me Haydara. Right? So his mother initially named him Haydara. But then his father Abu Talib he didn't agree with this and he wanted to name him Ali. So of course it is the father's right to name the child. The father has the final, say, the final say in naming the child. So he decided to name him Ali and this became his actual name. So he is Ali ibn Abi Talib. His kunya was Abu al-Hasan. As of course his firstborn son was al-Hasan ibn Ali. And al-Hasan of course is the son of Ali and Fatima radiallahu anhumah. Fatima was the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Al Hasan is the grandson of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the father of Al Hasan is Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. So he was known as Abu Al Hasan. Also, he was known as Abu Rayhanatain, Abu Rayhanatain, the father of the two Rayhans. 
Rayhan is a nice plant with a very beautiful smell. A nice plant with a beautiful smell. So Ali radiallahu anhu is known as Abu Rayhanatain, the father of the two Rayhans. The two Rayhans being referred to here are Al Hassan and Al Hussein. Al Hassan and Al Hussein. So the Prophet ﷺ gave him this name as well, Abu Rayhanatain. There's a narration where once the Prophet ﷺ, close to the time of the passing away of the Prophet ﷺ, shortly before he passed away, he said to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he said, Salamun alayka ya Abu Rayhanatain, fa'an qaleelin yazhabu ruknaka, wallahu khalifati alayk. He said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, Salamun alayk, peace be upon you, Ya Abar Rayhanatain, O father of the two Rayhans, meaning the father of Al Hassan and Al Hussein. And then he said, Fa'an qalil yadhhabu ruknak. And after a short time, your two pillars will go. Your two pillars will go. Two pillars of support will go. Wallahu khalifati alayk. And I leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you after I am gone. So what are the two pillars that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was referring to here? Shortly afterward, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, هَذَا أَحَدُ الرُّكْنَيْنِ This is one of the pillars that has left. One of my pillars of support that has left. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has passed away. What is the other pillar? A few months later, the wife of Ali radiallahu anhu and the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima radiallahu anha, she also passed away a few months later after her father passed away sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when she passed away, Ali radiallahu anhu, the widower, he said, هَذَا الرُّكْنُ akhir. This is the other pillar of my support who has left as well. So he was known as Abu Rayhanatain. A name given to him by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali radiallahu an, he was also known as Abu Turab. And Abu Turab was actually the most beloved name to him. He loved this one more than any of his other nicknames. Abu Turab, the father of the dirt, the father of the dust. Right? So how did he get this nickname? This nickname was also given to him by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is the story behind this nickname? Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to visit the house of Fatima radiallahu anha and Ali radiallahu anha. The house of his daughter and his son-in-law he came to visit. And when he came, Fatima radiallahu anha, his daughter was there, but Ali radiallahu anha was not there. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked his daughter, where is Ali, where is he? And then she mentioned to her father, Fatima radiallahu anha, mentioned to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you know, we had a dispute, we had an argument, he got angry and he left. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went and told someone, go find him, find Ali, where is he? So this man whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent, he started looking around and he found Ali radiallahu an sleeping in the masjid. He just went to the masjid and he was sleeping there in the masjid. And as he was sleeping in the masjid, you know the masajid those days, in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it did not have carpets like we have today, right? Rather, the ground was dirt. So Ali radiallahu anhu sleeping in the masjid, sleeping on the dirt. And his upper garment, his rida, it, it fell off while he was sleeping. So his skin was exposed to the dirt. His skin was directly on the dirt and he was sleeping. So when, when the one that the Prophet sallallahu sent to find Ali, when he came back to the Prophet sallallahu and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I found Ali, he's, he's sleeping in the masjid. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he went there to the masjid and he found Ali radiallahu anhu lying there. And he found, he saw the dust on the body, the dirt on the body of Ali radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he, he started wiping off that dirt from Ali radiallahu anhu with his own hand. And he said to Ali radiallahu anhu, Qum ya Aba Turab, Qum ya Aba Turab. Stand up, get up, O oh, oh father of the dirt. Because the dirt was on him, that's why he gave him this name. In a loving way, قُمْ يَا أَبَا تُرَى As he wiped the dirt off of him, قُمْ يَا أَبَا تُرَى So Ali radiallahu anhu got up and you know that was it, the dispute was resolved. Ali radiallahu anhu went back home and, and alhamdulillah everything was fine. So the Prophet sallallahu addressed him in this beautiful way and he called him Abatura. 
So this kunya of his, Abu Turab, it became the most beloved name to him. He loved to be called this more than he loved to be called anything else. So these were some of the names and titles that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was known by. And inshallah, in our next session, we will continue and we'll give, we'll start to give a description of the physical characteristics of Ali radiallahu an in our next lesson, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll get into that next week, bi idhnillah. جزاكم الله خيرا وبارك الله فيكم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين